Welcome to Paul's Toolbox. Today I'm going to cover adding a window on my side wall right here of my garage. And the reason why I'm adding this window is because I bought a window unit and I don't want to just put a hole in my wall and, and trim around it. In case I ever decide to take this out, I'll still have a nice window there. So I have a 36 by 36 window we're going to put in there and uh, I'm going to show you the first steps to it. Aesthetics to me is, is very important when you're putting windows in a house or anywhere on your wall. I want this to be centered in between my electrical panel and my shelving over here. So this is my center line. I marked it off. I measured my distance from the panel over to my shelves and I got my center part. Then when I measured 18 inches to each side because it's a 36 inch window, I'm right over one of the studs here and over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scoot it in a little bit and go right next to the stud. It's only an inch. You won't even notice that. So I'm going to go next to this stud right here and then the stud that goes here and over here will have to come out because I'm going to block this in. Now what we're going to do is mark off with my level and get all my lines and I'll see where we're going to start cutting from. And then I'm going to take a peek back here. We'll cut some little sections out so I can see what's back here and feel it and make sure I'm not cutting any wires. I'm going to be using my Swanson level for this. This is a Savage level. It's a new line by Swanson of professional series levels. And they gave me a few of them to test out and they wanted some feedback. I love them. I use them all the time. They're really durable, heavy duty stuff. So I'm going to take and mark my line right here. And I had already placed a nail right there to tell me where the uh, side of the stud is. So we'll get this level. My eyes aren't that great, so this level really comes in handy because the bubble's easy to read on. Okay, we're going to start there. I have a line here because I had some shelving in here and I pulled it back off. So we're going to go a little bit lower than that line. I marked it off right here. All right, now I'm going to come 36 inches over from my line here and get a new line. So right here, looks pretty good to me. We'll go with. Okay, since I'm vertically challenged, I'm going to get on a stepping stool to mark that last one. That should be my opening right here. So I'm going to take this down all the way to here so I can feel everything make sure there's no problem. I'm going to go shallow. Yeah, we're good. No wires in here anywhere. This bottom line is the line I'm going to go by, and you'll see I'll just walk right into it. I don't mind cutting the rock and pulling that off without a mask, but when it comes to messing with the fiberglass, I put a mask on. Now I can just pull it right out. My up and down opening is going to be 39 inches. My width is going to be 36. And the reason is, these studs right here are going to have to be capped to make a frame. The sides, I don't have to worry about. I can tuck it in and you'll see what I'm talking about. It's 
all she wrote. I made my cuts across here on purpose, not cutting the bottom yet, because I want to leave as much drywall as possible on here. So I'm going to come back over with my reciprocating saw and just cut a line right here, 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 and here, and drop these out. And that way, all my drywall can stay in place and I can tuck this right behind it. Okay. I'm gonna go 36 and 1 8 inch over here. Then I'm gonna take a 2 by 4 set it right on here. I could measure it, but uh, this will work. That's where I want to cut it, right here. I'm going to do the same for the other end of this board so we can cut both of these. This board will do. I'll just cut it in half. and use this for the two sides. Next, I'm gonna put some screws in here, and I don't wanna put them on the end and tack this here. I'm gonna tack it down here. That way, when I put these screws in here, it's in the middle of the board and it won't split. It'll have strength. So I'm just gonna start them up. Now this is strong. I can set it in that wall. And when I put the other stud on top of it, you see I can pre-drill this and just run it right into there. Now you can see why I did this. We have this block right here. Once we set this up and tuck it in there, we screw it in place and now we have something to screw this board onto and give it strength. I'm gonna set this one in place so I can get a good measurement and get both sides square. So I'll tuck it down in there. Doesn't hurt to get that snug first. Now I have these pre-drilled. I'm just gonna set it in place and run my screws. Now I'm gonna pre-drill these. Just gonna go down a little bit, about an inch and a half away, and run my hole forward. I don't have my trim yet, so I just set this in place right now, and uh, what I'm going to do is go pick up some 1x4s, and I want to use PVC, the plastic kind for the, for the outside. That way it won't rot, and then I'm going to get me some door casing so I can case out this window. So I'll pick that up tonight, and tomorrow morning I'll knock this thing out. We're ready to make this opening here, but let me tell you, we're not stopping right here. I have to put a header on this. And I'm gonna do that from the outside. I don't wanna mess up the rock on the inside and cut all of that out if I don't have to. And it's not that hard. If I decided to, I could just cut this out and float it. But why do that? I have trim that's gonna cover this part right here. And then uh, the other side has lap siding. So all I have to do is pull out a few pieces of lap siding up top. I looked over there and I have plenty of room to do it. And once I pull that lap siding out, I'll be able to slip a header in here and attach that. I'm getting ready to drill some holes. I'm gonna put four holes right here in the corners so I can go on the outside and mark off this opening and cut it. This is just my rough opening. I'm gonna to have to go out wider than that because my trim for the outside is, are, are one by fours and those have to sit right against the window and I have to make a nice clean cut all the way around for that to set in place.
This is going to allow me to take my saw and run right against the inside studs <clears throat> and across here, this plate and this. So I'll go right across here and get all of this out of the way. I already pulled the nails off on the inside. That's why this siding's falling down. I just pulled it through from the other side. We'll start by scoring the caulk underneath here so we don't split it. I have another video on siding that you can check out to show you how to fix it, but we're gonna cover a decent amount on this. Now this one I'm, I'm just going to break loose, but I'm not going to take it out because I have my phone lines coming through there and I don't need to get that one out completely anyway. See how you can pop it down and get in there? Once it's broken loose, it's easy to work. Wood siding is really easy to work with once you know how to do it. You see this nail right here? This is how you install siding. You put it on the top strip. So you'll start from the bottom of your house, you nail your first piece on, then your other one overlaps that, and then you nail the top strip of that next one, and you just keep going up. That's how it's done. Now on replacing it, one of these, I'm gonna have to go ahead and, and nail it on the top and bottom, but, but the other ones, when I put them up, I can just nail them across the top. There you go. My buddy's taking care of me. I'm going to go ahead and rip this board down to 10 inches. Ready, boss? Yep. Let's try to get that line right all the way to the end. I can't see it. I'm going to start off with pencil and marker. Well. size.
my van away. <laughs> if I were framing this for a doorway, um, or if I had a second floor or anything where I really have a lot of weight on there, I would go ahead and put jack studs on the sides here. And what I mean by that is a stud that goes from the ground or from my base plate up to where my header goes, and it would the header would sit on top of it. That would give it extra strength. I'm not going to need that because I only cut out two studs, and this is it's 36 inches wide, and I don't have a tremendous amount of weight up there. Um, this is my garage. I don't have anything in there. It's empty, and all of this wall is studded up, so it's it's plenty. I'm going to put my two two by tens, and I'm going to run screws this way into there to lock it in, and then when I put this part of my frame in right here it's this base part is sitting on top of the studs that I cut so it's plenty strong enough I made sure to take the crown side and put up on this Here's a perfect example of why you need a header across here, some type of header to hold these up. Even though it's not a tremendous amount of weight, there's still weight on there and this 2x4 is on flat. They're doubled but it's still on flat. So just that little bit you can see it's already dropped down a tiny bit. So when I jam this in here and get it tight it's going to bring it back up and this the double uh, 2x10s will hold that. Let's get this ready. Get jam it up there. See that easily puts it where it needs to be. I'll just tap it in place from the bottom and top, square it up. And I'll run a screw from there into here, and it's not going to go anywhere. get much better than that. Screws through here. I pre-drilled the stud so all I have to do is run into this. Just makes it a little bit easier, it's faster. Three screws in here on each side on both of them. Okay, now we're going to get this. My next step is to get a clean cut right here so I can put my trim on the outside of my window. Now, with this beam, normally I would laminate a beam if it was really holding up a lot of weight, like I said earlier. I would take two of these two bys, two by 12s most of the time, and I'd sandwich it with a half inch piece of plywood, and that would give me my three and a half inches right here, okay? So, I didn't have to do that. This is gonna be plenty strong enough, like I said. It picked this little sag up right here, and it's gonna hold it, it's gonna be tight. Be very careful when you're cutting this. When I go in, I'll go in on this side of the line and back up real slowly and catch that line so I don't cross it.
Now we'll put our blackboard back in the same place. We're just about ready to put the window in, but I just, I'm going to take this blackboard out of here and I'm going to put OSB board. If you have plywood, that's great. I just had scrap OSB around the house and I ripped some strips so I can case this around with that, secure my window, and then I can, before I put my window in, I can use tight seal the tape and put all around here. It'll stick real well on this OSB where it will not stick on this stuff because this stuff just falls apart. So I'm going to just score it around and we're going to pull it out, get this junk out the way. You see how soft it is? It's easy. I could just take and knock a hole through this and walk right through my wall if I wanted to. Some flashings will require you to prime it first. Uh, this one doesn't. I have the smooth side out, so it's going to stick on here really well. If I thought it wouldn't, I would prime this and then come back and put it on. But I've done this before and it sticks well on the smooth side. I'm going to start off with this corner here and I'm going to take a small piece of tape, peel the backing off of it. Then I'm going to take it to where an inch and a half or so overlaps, hangs over, okay? Tuck it in the corners real well, get it to bond. And then I'm going to take it from the corner and just slice it out. Pull it tight down here, pull it tight here. I have it the exact size. Okay. Put it on here real tight. From the corner, I feel where my corner is, and I'm going to just slice it out on an angle. 45 degree angle, somewhere around there, works well. I'll fold the top over and fold the bottom over. And I'm going to cut this side and do the same thing. This is how it should look when it's done. Everything is covered. There's nothing exposed at all on here. So if water gets on here, it's going to channel off. Get it right up top where I want it. I got a good overhang. I'm just going to walk this down. Make sure you get, get this flat, completely flat on there. and You don't want to leave any bubbles. Okay, same thing. We're going to slice this and have this wrapped on the top and bottom of these corners. I push it down in those corners. I'm going to slice it out, right? See, I don't go all the way to the corner. I come close to it. That way I can stretch some of that tar over the corner when I fold it. See how it covers in there? Okay. When I put my top corners in, sometimes I'll put them underneath if I think about it first, or you can put it on top. You, as long as you put your, your very top one in over that, you're fine. It's going to overlap. And uh, you're not going to have any problems anyway. Some people don't even put corner ones on the top, and it still works. So um, I just like to cover my bases, and it only takes a minute to put it on. All right. Get this one in. Last one. Same thing. Run it across here. Get my jab saw. This knife is awesome because I've got a good handle. Sometimes I really have to bear down on things and this comes in handy with that. There are times when I want a smaller knife, but this is great when I need a bigger one. And a lot of times on things like this, I need a bigger handle. 
This is not necessary, but I'll use a good siliconized acrylic uh, latex caulk. You can use silicone if you want to. I put it underneath all the way around, so when I push my uh, trim on there, I get a seal on the outside of it all the way around. It's just something to help make sure that no water gets back there. We're going to caulk on the outside of that anyway, but I just like to seal it up right on the edge. And uh, here's a trick with your caulk, or a little tip. I keep my caulk in the fridge, because if you keep it at a cooler temperature, it will not dry out. So if this, uh, you use it and you don't use it all, you can put it in the fridge and it, it'll hold for a long, long time. Also, if you find you're working in the summer, this will just keep oozing out and oozing out because it gets real thin when it's, when it's uh, in the heat. So if you keep it cool, it's a lot more consistent and thick. You don't have to worry about it running out on you when you're not using it. So we're gonna tuck this in. Perfect. Okay, last one. Beautiful, nice fit all the way around. I don't work with Ryobi, but I will tell you, this is one awesome little gun. I've had it for about, I don't know, a year and a half or so, and uh, it's never failed me. I'm gonna take and run a little bead of caulk all around my channel here and on the outside because I'm gonna paint this and uh, I want it sealed up really well. It's all completed out here and everything's sealed up. Now all I have to do is come back and paint it, which uh, I was planning on doing anyway because I started painting the house and I hadn't addressed this side because I was waiting to get this window in. Now that it's in, I can come back and paint it. On my next video, I'm gonna show you how to put the trim on here and case this in. That's real simple too, a lot easier than doing this, and it really dresses it up. Well, as usual, don't forget to subscribe. Check out paulstoolbox.com for all my archive videos, and I will see you on the next project.